All right. Wrap it's been it. so long since we did one. I these. know. So excited. I know. We posted on the community tab asking for questions for rapid fire. So we're going to do the best we can to get through as many pew, pew. of them as pew pew. Pew pew. Rapid fire. Pew pew. Sorry, I'm thinking, I'm in kid mode. I can't wait to go home and play with the kids. But let's go through a bunch about the offensive line. Uh, different questions. Okay. Right? Rapid uh, though, right? We're gonna. I'm gonna read the questions in their entirety, and you're gonna have to give me a rapid answer or vice versa. Okay. okay are but, we are we putting the spin on it like we usually do? I mean, spin. The spin. You ask the question because you're reading it because I'm yeah. driving, obviously. I'll take a position. I'll just you, take the opposite. Yeah. yeah that's okay. Fine. That's what works. Right out of the gate, what is the deal with uh, Harrison Phillips? Uh, has he, he's been inactive for a few games now. Interesting question. Healthy scratch. Yeah, healthy scratch. I don't know. Maybe he's not really fulfilling the role that they initially signed him up to do. Um, a lot of people thought he was the heir apparent to Kyle Williams. I, I didn't see that. It, it seemed like it. You know, even when he got drafted, a lot of the experts were saying, oh, there's, there's Kyle Williams' little brother. They did a commercial on it the first year. It was so mm -hmm. funny. Um, I don't know. I think it's a combination of he's hurt, he's coming back from a serious knee injury mm -hmm. and it, the role probably changed for him in, in the defense you know yeah. when you don't have star next to you meet bodies it's kind of tough to be well very yeah. very productive you're the one being doubled now right uh it's tough so i think they're they're trying to uh, test other avenues on that defensive front well i don't think you're gonna give uh ed oliver's playing time to harrison phillips. no oh, well i do think the role is different right for harrison phillips yeah uh and i think everything you said makes complete and total sense uh, opposite side of that coin is um, his role on this team would be more of a pass rush defensive tackle. That's just that's the role that he would need to play, mm -hmm. and I don't really think that's where you're asking him to play. Right no, now, right? Um, especially coming off the injury from a weight control standpoint, he's not going to be really where you want him anyway. No, right? So I don't think it's a level of play issue. I think it's I, I have a feeling it is more of a health and conditioning issue. He's not the player that they need him to be right now. It's not that it's a scheme issue. I just, I, I think they need to kind of take some time to weight control him and make sure that he's going to be effective. Because he, he really wasn't great. But an interesting follow-up would be, how, what does this mean about the drafting process for the Bills? Just third round pick, man. That's, those are turn So and was burn. Moss and Singletary. <laughs> turn and burn. Turn, turn and burn. burn. What? <laughs> Next question. Uh... Is the defensive issue the team has had not being able to stop anything, the run or the pass, letting everyone score at will, uh, more of a scheme issue with Leslie Frazier and his constant gotta trust the process crap. This is from Paul Berg, by the way. Um, or is it per, or is it a personnel issue? Because other than Starr, who's missing, we lost Phillip, Phillips and his nine sacks, six of which came in two games, and Shaq, who uh, all he did was beat up Leonard Fournette. I just don't get the top five defense for the last three years to a bottom defense this year. Explain if at all possible. Well, I mean, first of all, they're not they're not bottom. They're not performing to the level they have over the last years. Let's just say that. They're middle of the pack. I think it depends on the metric you're looking at. Yeah, I and think it depends on what you're looking at. No teams have been able to really, with the exception of the <laughs> Hopkins mossing everyone, uh, they haven't been able to go deep. Right. You name a team that's been able to throw the ball deep consistently on the Bills. Yeah. They haven't. So right. they've been running. Mm -hmm. The Buffalo Bills run defense is a little bit different when you don't have a one technique in there to stop everything and clog everything up. I understand that. Your linebackers have been banged up. When you're when you're playing practice squad and, and seventh round picks as your linebackers, you and you're playing you a seventy seven year old AJ Klein, that's gonna happen to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. This defense is not the same defense that it has been before. Poyer is leading all non linebackers with in tackles for the year. Your state, your safety. Bad luck. Who, who's had to come in the box quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Um the problem, I mean, the problem extends pretty far. Plus, you're playing a different style of offensive football. Yeah. The Buffalo Bills were more of a ball control with a defensive head coach offense. Yep. So, therefore, your defense complemented that style of play. Not However, yeah. yeah, this Not style of play where your defense is on the field too much, mm -hmm. they're tired out. They're gassed. Yep. Well, so, and that's what's happening is teams, when you have an offense that's, you know, among the top in passing. Yes. Your goal as an as an opposing offense is to drag that clock out and limit the possessions, right? 
So you're going to run the football on a high-powered offense because you need to drag that game out a little bit. Exactly, which is a place that Buffalo Bills fans haven't been in a it's long time. It's deep water for them. Yeah, they don't under. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. We have a top – I mean, up until Thursday, you had the, the number one yardage receiver. Well, he still is. And um, passer in the NFL. Number one – after 10 weeks, you had the number one passer. Right. Uh, as far as yardage goes. So teams are going to try to run on you to limit – like you said, limit their possessions. Yeah, it's a great point. We've, we've done. We did it to Kansas City, like that. Tried. That was that we tried, right? And it worked. It was effective, right? It was effective for. If total, they stop a third and fourteen, the Buffalo Bills are probably going in to score. That's right. what I mean. That yeah. game, that that game could have been bad. So yes. You don't have to like what happened. You don't have to like the fact that the Bills let Kansas City run the football. But the fact is, the Bills walked in with the same theory offensively that they walked in defensively. Of Run the football. Let them run the football. It's fine. Just let them run the football. Yeah. Right? Um, I don't think it's anything as far as scheme. Um, I think this is just what happens. This is your personnel. You don't have bangers. Like, you don't... This isn't, This isn't. you know, 1996. There is no wow factor on this Buffalo no. Bills defense. No. They play... You, you have the, speed guys across the board. Yeah. You have speed guys across... The, so you're going to get banged up in the run. You have a complimentary team for a run oriented offense not a past oriented offense yep that's is where the, that's where the disconnects coming in my yep. opinion. here we go uh Steven asks our defense feels like it's missing that leader that zoe was not saying edmonds won't eventually become but right now he's not name three players the bills could pick up right now they could fill that role talent is secondary so who are three leaders that could come in go ahead Just say Clay Matthews. Just get it over with. Oh my God, no! That's not what you need. No. That's not Why? You you're, you're telling me Clay Matthews doesn't make Tremaine Edmonds a more a, a more complete linebacker as far as it's understanding. About leaders. It's about leaders now. Yeah. Clay Matthews isn't a leader. Would you? Would you say he was? Clay Matthews has more, worlds more experience than is in that linebacking room. Well, then bring Zoe back. You want to talk about experience? I will fight you. <laughs> Clay Matthews? Uh, that's you know, what right? a lot of people are going to say. That's why I bring it. I know, I know. But I, I, I look at it from, that's why it says talent is secondary. That's why yeah. That's why it's a little curveball. <laughs> right. You, you button up. Uh, it's, that's why it's a little secondary because you, what are you going to do? You're going to put him on, you're not going to put him at linebacker. You're going to put him in Trent Murphy's spot. Yeah. And, you, you're replacing AJ Klein. Yeah, what you're doing. Yeah, yeah he you're didn't. Replacing he didn't. Or AJ. Okay, okay. So uh, he didn't have a wealth of experience playing for the Rams last year, which is a high-powered offense coupled with a defense that has a first-round defensive tackle and a stud corner. Mm -hmm. hmm, where's that come from? Uh, so I personally would go to Earl Thomas. You know, I would. Oh. Give me Earl Thomas for AJ Klein. Six days a week and twice on Sunday, please. Right now, you want to talk about a leader? You telling me they would have still played that flat in Tennessee if Earl Thomas was there? You think they run over the Buffalo? The Kansas City runs all over the Buffalo Bills if Earl Thomas is in there? They don't. He's a hammer. They don't. He could play anywhere. You want to talk about Swiss Army knives? You don't have to play Poyer in the box ever if you have Earl Thomas, and then you won't have to play Teron Johnson either. That is a fact. That and, is a fact. And it's not like he's a Jamal Adams where he can't cover anyone. Right. He can cover. He can. He can. Give me him tomorrow. No. Okay. I'm going to give you one that I don't think you expect to. I don't think you expect. I'm going to say DeAndre Baker. The reason I say DeAndre Baker You're is... You're adorable. What? What do you mean I'm adorable? <laughs> If you bring a player like that into your locker room right now, right? So just give you a backstory. DeAndre Baker was arrested for uh, for armed robbery, right? And I, uh, and se and I think sexual assault, if first, I remember correctly. First correct. round pick, yeah. Yeah, first round pick by the Giants. They released him not long after he was arrested. And now it turns out that the lawyer for the people representing this case was arrested for extortion of DeAndre Baker. So that that's where this is gone, right? So if you bring a player like DeAndre Baker, and one, he's a former first-round pick, so you're, you've seen the Bills do this before, where 
regardless of who the player is, first round talent is first round talent. They're gonna see if they can use it. Okay, um, but that's a player who is going to have a big story and that the team will rally around and mm-hmm. accept, right? And that will bring the team closer on the on the defensive side of the football. Not saying that he's a leader, but what it's going to do is it's going to solidify the roles of who is in charge in that room. It's gonna it will reinvent that room. You bring in DeAndre Baker, and I know that makes the case against signing Dane Jackson to the roster. I get it. I know what that means, right? Yeah. But if you're gonna put Josh Norman on an IR and sign DeAndre Baker, just sign me up for that right now because I'm fine. That's fine with me. I love how you took the opposite approach to that, where a guy like that being brought in your locker room solidifies who the real leaders are because they got to keep him, quote unquote, keep him. Yeah. Listen, all right. Let's show the ropes. You right? got a second chance here. Mm-hmm. Let's let's knock it out of the park. Right. And John asks, why can't they set the edge? How difficult is it? It's like the only thing they're supposed to do on this defense. Or how much is the D line overpaid? So it's just like. It's the same question, right? So why can't they set the edge? I am gonna make it I'm gonna make the point that they can and they are setting the edge. I think the issue is that it's a it's four on one. Or it's four it's five on four. They're just they're not strong enough on the interior to really contain that, right? It's it's five on four football across the defensive line. That's that's what it is. They're getting played. This defensive line, they could play head up on every single defensive lineman, and the offense still is going to win because they have an extra player. And that's the player that's getting downfield. I, I'm just going to make the case that it's not setting the edge. That's the problem. You could, you could be frustrated with defensive ends overrunning edges with quarterbacks who are stepping up. You could be frustrated with that, but that's not setting the edge. That's that. I. I that's Hughes. I. That's Jerry Hughes to a T. Right. I'm thinking more on the side of Trent Murphy. So let's say you have okay, you have your Vernon Butler one tech, mm-hmm. and you got Trent Murphy. Okay, okay. What's happening? If you guys could follow my logic with my hands, let's see how this works. What's happening is that you're getting Murphy's coming up the field. He's setting the edge, mm-hmm. so the running back cannot go outside of him. That's what setting the edge means. And then you have a guard center combination going on Butler, where the center's taking Butler, guard checks inside to see if. You know, he, anybody else he's pushing coming. up Butler, and he's going second level to, to Edmonds. So what's happening is that they're getting a, a, a block seal on Edmonds running in between where Butler and and um, even though Murphy's not coming up the field a ton, right. they're running right in between there, and then the secondary has to come up and try to make a play on that. Right. So that he's setting the edge, so he's not going outside. They're going more off tackle. Right. So basically, that's how it's work. That's how it works. You have center guard tackle. Tackle's taken, Murphy. He's setting the edge. And then you got the guard and center combination going to the second level. That's what we were talking about a little bit earlier. So that's the combination that's happening. The edge is getting set. They're running inside of him. Right. Yeah, I don't think it's an edge issue. No, I, but I, they are the highest paid defensive line, which makes it even worse. Uh, Steven asks, uh, who are your five, five guys starting on the offensive line if everyone is healthy? Is Morris your starting center? No. No? No. Felici- Feliciano's your starting center? Yes, because I would still have quit Spain on this team! Okay, no, when this is not, we're not going, this no, is, I would, uh, we're not going to the way, way back machine. This is not, we can't do that. Hmm. So I, I can either, I can either go with the one way or I can just ruffle some feathers. You're going to ruffle feathers either way. You might as well just say what I'm you gonna want. Ruffle, I'm going to ruffle feathers. Okay. Okay, you want to know my starting five? Yeah. First of all, Williams... Heck of a pickup. Heck of a yep. pickup over there. Playing great. Here's my starting five. Mm-hmm. Ready? Williams. Mm-hmm. I want to ruffle feathers so bad right now. Don't say Cody Ford. Don't you I say Cody Ford. I want to ruffle feathers. Don't you say Cody Ford. Can I ruffle feathers? Yours or should I ruffle somebody else's? Okay. Here's the line that they're going to play. Here's the line they're going to play, right? Dawkins. Ford. Mm-hmm. Feliciano. Winters and Williams. That's what they're going to play. That's what they're going to play. What would I want with Mor- Morris healthy? You guys had five concussions, man. Aside from the game itself or the Bills, th- this is a human being that's had five concussions. I worry about the guy's well-being. I don't I want him to play that. anymore. I agree. I, I, I understand and agree with that sentiment. Removing his well-being from the equation. Removing? Okay. 
it's gonna be kind of tough. If if, it, if his well being were of concern, they would have buy Harden. That's it. That's like, true. That's, that's the organization's problem. That's not ours. That's their that's problem right. to gotcha. manage. I worry about the guy. I mean, that, I, that I, not from a human said, level, yes. I understand. That not be, that being said, um, <laughs> if I wanted to ruffle feathers, I would go Williams, Feliciano, Morse. Nasecki and Dawkins. You really think Nasecki would be a more effective guard than Ward? I think that right now, I've saw I've seen Ford get bull rushed. I've seen Ford get thrown around. I've seen Ford have struggles in there, which then struggle that they, they struggle to get the run started. You're telling me if you put Dawkins, Nasecki, and Morse. Over there on that side, they're they're gonna have trouble running the ball. I that's one. Two. My other line was if you don't have Morris, you put Bates at center. So I love Bates. Though, I right? know, and I do too. He's he's just so well rounded, right? He's not great at anything. He plays every but position, he, but he plays everything <laughs> well enough, right? That yeah, I, I understand that. Uh, I. I understand your Nisecki, your Nisecki point is actually a very fascinating one because uh, last year the Bills, when Nisecki was at right tackle, um, certainly didn't seem to have trouble getting around the edge. No. And Ford's played three different positions so far this year. True. So they're trying to find a home for him. They, <laughs> they, they really couldn't try any harder to make Cody Ford good. What? They really can't. They're literally just trying everything they can. But the question becomes, at what point do you need to pull the ripcord? To me... I, I honestly would rather not see Cody Ford at left guard anymore, but the fact of the matter is he's going to be your left guard. So it's going to be Dawkins, Ford, um, Morris, Feliciano, Morris, Feliciano, and Williams. Yeah, and that's what D- Daniel Barry said in the comments of Steven. Yeah, I, I just you know. I just love I mentioned the name Winters. And I I wanted to see how many people actually paused the video and was like putting hate comments. <laughs> Who knew that you said? Who knew that you pronounce it Ike Ike Butker? <laughs> Did I've been calling him Ike Bottinger for yeah. two seasons? Yeah. And if I got you with the Winters comment, yeah, I got you. <laughs> Daniel Garis, what do you think, or what do you make the online coaching moves decisions this year? So this kind of plays in to the one that we just had, the the question that we just had. Uh, re- let me rephrase that question a little bit. Are the current online carousel that we have a product of offensive line coaching offensive coordinator coaching head coaching or some sort of analytics that for some reason matter to the bills now (laughs) because i i I think i think think there's four different places that you could put this argument so is it offensive line coach offensive coordinator uh analytics department head coach I think analytics and injury forced you to get Williams and put Ford to guard. Okay. Those two moves, I think, were analytics. Okay. Okay. So now you bring it back to the coaching. You say, okay, now we have Ford at guard. The sec he got hurt, we got him as an insurance policy. Bates can play anywhere. We picked up Winters because we needed a guard. He was free. You had. <laughs> he was free. You had Spain. Like, yeah. you had Spain in the building. Yep. I still don't know what the situation is with that. So you get rid of Spain. Now you have injuries to that position. Mm-hmm. So now it has to go even more to offensive line coaching. Yep. I mean, OG Bobby Johnson has been, you know, trying to stick everything together on that offensive line, trying different combinations. But the more you try, you lose consistency and cohesiveness. Now Morse goes out. Right. Now you get Mongo back. You know what I mean? It's like, what's going on here? The only two consistencies you've had were the bookends. Yeah, Dawkins and Dawkins Williams. and Williams have been your exactly. only two consistent guys. And I will apologize to Paul Berg right now because I, I say every time I say Dawkins' name on an episode, he just loses his mind. But that interior, you want to talk about Winters and Ike Butger is his name? Mm-hmm. You put them, them two guys next to Feliciano, look how they play. I mean, they're playing pretty. They can't open up balls for the, the run. They're, they're not running the ball. I understand that. Still can't run the ball. But they're able to throw the ball. You're still able to throw the ball. Right. Um, Which should be the so hardest tough. of the things to do is across oh, pass line. protection. Yeah, linemen love run blocking. 
I that's what I mean. That's, if, if you're a running football team, you could play t- you could play tango with your offensive linemen all day because going forward they like. There's yeah. not a lot of communication to going forward, no. right? No, they do run zone se- zone schemes. So maybe in Buffalo it is harder. That's how you to change yeah. to change offensive linemen is with these zone schemes when you have guards pulling across, right? Maybe that maybe that is harder for them to pick up, and maybe we haven't seen the way that this offense is really going to roll because of that. Yeah. But even with that point being made, I do not think the Bills are starting their best five linemen no. if they do not intend to start for us. And this whole, we're going to play the best matchup, that tells me that there's an analytics department that's saying something, and I don't understand what that well, is. Well, they, they've had their money ball guys going back and forth. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. That, Terrifying. That's been a. It worked, though. Sometimes it works. Jordan Phillips is a great example of, hey, we we drafted this guy in Miami. It didn't work out. These splits say he's an effective player. Let's let's try this one again, right? So right. it has paid off before. Mm-hmm. But it, it's they, they gambled on that offensive line, and it, that gamble is not yet working out. Benjamin Murphy, what gets the rushing offense going? Does Allen need to be included in that? That's an interesting question. Again, let me kind of rephrase that a little bit. Is the running game ineffective because Allen isn't making the appropriate reads on the opposing defense to get the game, the running game going where it needs to go? You're you, my friend. You are sneaky, sneaky. You are sneaky, sneaky, Paul. Because Never underestimate your sneaky, sneakiness. No, I don't. Well, I, read, I see the question, and the question, I think the question means, does Allen need to be your leading rusher? And he has been, and we've seen what that looks like, and it's that's not working well. For you. If so you want is, him to make the playoffs, like to right. make it to the playoffs healthy, I think the fact that he got hurt threw a wrench in Allen running the ball a little bit more. Yeah, which also that. helped him because then yeah. he knew he wasn't invincible. Right. Uh, that's one. Number two, people underestimate the quarterback's involvement in a run. It's not just a handoff. You got to make sure that you're caught. Not in a pass play. You got to make your reads, make your throw. Understandable. If you don't make the right read, don't make the right throw. Understand. But in a run, you got to read just as much. You got to say, okay, where's the safety coming at? So I could I could say, you know, if I break first level, what's going on? What's going on here? This and that. A lot of times he's handing the ball off right into the blitz. Yep. And I don't know if he's just saying he All checked right. into it last game. Yeah, I, I'm not just big saying. time checked into it. Hey, do I do I just run the? Is he just running the plays that come in, or is he checking for those? We saw he, him check to it, but if, some of those is he just running the run play just to run it. I don't know. So only only two guys know that. Mm-hmm. Only two guys know that. We don't have information to well, that. Well, and again, is is the run game struggling because Allen's checking out of all the runs? Like we've seen him have a propensity to do that. Like we know he has a propensity to want to throw the football. There is a there is a little bit of truth to that in the fact that you got two rhythm runners back there who need to they need to run the ball. They that's, need to feel the ball that's in their hands. On, they need to that's feel. on Bean. That's Bean's fault. You think so? Yeah. Well, maybe he cool. thought his offense was going to run the ball more, but then you draft two wide receivers and trade for Diggs. Yeah. So is that is that the reason why you have two third round picks instead of investing a high pick in a running back? Maybe. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Tough. Just nothing like a twenty five minute rapid fire. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed it.